to a Neighbor's Choice Radio. I'm your host, David Gronoski. We now turn to our friend Tucker Goodrich, who joins us for a big day for something he's been involved with, a new project that's come out with their product, Zero Acres Farms. Tucker Goodrich works with to develop a solution for vegetable oils. Tucker, how you doing, sir? Doing great, David. How are you? I'm doing well. So, you know, you got a exciting day you you recently you got attacked by youtube too what's going on with you what'd you say i had a i had a busy week um yeah and i also saw that you released the uh podcast interview that you did with jeff knobs uh that you and i did with jeff knobs the founder of zero acres um today that was that was great that was a lot of fun i think people find that really informative um so an old a January 2021 um, interview that I did with uh, a friend, Raphael Sertoli, on his YouTube channel. He got a notification that YouTube had uh, removed it because it was, you know, misinformation, blah, blah, blah. And so we pretty quickly put it up on Rumble. Um, but at the same time, I said, hey, Rafi, there's no bad information in here. Um, you know, you should dispute this. And luckily, Google actually came to their senses and, uh, or, you, you know, YouTube is part of Google. Google came to their senses and uh, gave him the video back. So it's still available on YouTube. It's also now available on Rumble. And, of course, this makes me think about how reliable – YouTube is as a source of information um, and how reliable Google is as a source of information. I mean, a little while back, I read uh, I read this blog post and the guy on the blog post made a couple of claims and you know, I wanted to I wanted to know if what he was saying was true. So I went and I looked it up on Google and the post that I was looking at, which was hosted on Google's own servers, didn't appear. And so I went over to Microsoft's Bing um, search engine and I ran the exact same search and the page that I was looking at came up and a third or 50% more results came up on Bing. So Google was filtering not only the page that I'd been reading that I was trying to confirm, which turned out not to be true by the way, but 50%, you know, a third of the rest of the results also were suppressed by Google. So huh. how can we rely on this? How can we rely on this company if they're taking stuff like your YouTube channel, for instance, offline? You know, I mean, it's, 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 it's just a real problem. It's a real problem when these folks are determining what we can and can't listen to and, you know, what searches we can do and what results we're going to get back for our searches. You know, Lord only knows how they're doing it. Obviously, with uh, the interview that I did with with Raphael, they were mistaken and they came back and corrected it. How many times do they make a mistake like, you know, they did with you and they never make, they never come back and, and, uh, correct it it's just it's infuriating yeah it's um it's sad because it's 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 very regressive it's reactionary they're not progressive they're not a liberal company you know they're a very reactionary dark age minded company because you know they 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 don't know what they don't know they don't know you know that which i guess their sponsors uh don't want them to promote so you know i guess the I guess you got to get into some of those coordinated uh, news initiatives that people talk about, like Robert Malone, that has been at the forefront of a lot of this kind of coordinated censorship, this walled garden of a few corporations that have hijacked so much of the Internet, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, you know, these, these, these platforms don't have, uh, you know, the, the interests of, of, uh, of people's, uh, you know, critical thinking skills and pursuing truth wherever it goes. They don't have that. It's paramount. It's obvious. Yeah. And, you know, saying it's regressive, um, 
I don't know that that's fair <laughs> because the first folks who really started doing stuff like this were the progressives led by Woodrow Wilson in the United States during World War I when they started deciding who got to talk and who didn't get to talk and you know, throwing people into jail because they were saying the wrong things. Um, you know, that that was a core part of the progressive movement right from the beginning. Um, you know, so let's let's put the blame directly where it belongs. Um, there were lots of, you know, quote unquote regressive. I mean, somebody pointed out to me recently when looking at what what was happening with uh, Trudeau up in Canada that. George Washington had an account at the Bank of England, and even during the American Revolution, the Bank of England left his account there. They didn't seize his assets or anything. And I mean, you know, technically, under British law, he was a traitor. Um, and yet they nevertheless respected his property rights. And, you know, Trudeau, on the other hand, you know, these truckers who were out expressing their free freedom of speech in Canada, he tried to ruin their businesses by taking their insurance away and seizing people's bank accounts without any due process of law. And then, you know, we've got the, you know, the Biden administration coordinating with these tech companies to get what they call quote unquote misinformation taken off the internet. Well, hey, that goes against our First Amendment. It's illegal when the government gets involved in doing that. And we know for a fact that they were coordinating with the tech companies because they've been bragging about it. Right. And, you know, it always hits a lot. You know, it's one thing when it happens to somebody else. It always hits a lot closer to home when it happens to me. You know, yeah. I mean, it's obviously already happened to you. So and a lot of our great discussions and a lot of the great discussions that you have on your on your radio show and on your podcast are now invisible to people who rely on Google and YouTube for information. And that's, that's a shame. That's yeah, I mean, just, just take, for shame. example, our interviews I've done with Michael Lasanti, you know, of the Southford University. I brought you on for one of those discussions and Dr. Yu, and he was talking yeah. about his amazing work in uh, Nature Magazine where he was identifying how to uh, deal with... Uh, cancer stem cells with FDA approved drugs already on the market. Right. And he's one of the most cited Google right. scholars dead or alive, according to Google scholar, scholar, ironically, which, you know, tallies up, you know, these types of things, but that's gone. Right. So all the people out there who are struggling with cancer or have family members who are struggling with cancer, they are left in the dark ages about that information. And I was one of the few people in broadcast or podcast or any cast media to give him attention because he's up there in academia, you know what I mean? And nobody's taking the story because all the big money goes to, you know, immunotherapy and all this, and that's fine. But this is way more revolutionary if you, if you can take out, you know, cancer stem cells at the mitochondrial level as he was explaining with that rotor everything it was complex you know it's science it's technical right. but we right. did what we could to make it explainable to the masses this is something new york times should be doing they don't do it and i'm tired of right. making excuses yeah. that they're just oh they just mean well no they don't they don't mean well they don't mean right. well it's obvious by the fruits of their behavior that they don't seem to mean well and that's sad because we're in a dark age and, and hopefully we can get out of it fast you know but it's going to take people like independent media really getting bigger and bigger audiences. Well, yeah, the so-called mainstream media can't die fast enough at this point. They're, they've, you know, I mean, the under Jeff Bezos, the Washington Post changed their motto to democracy dies in darkness, and apparently that's their goal. But imagine, imagine, Tucker, if just take that example again. Imagine if the media did their job and BBC and New York Times and ABC and CBS and they were reporting with Michael Lasanti's discoveries in Nature magazine. Imagine how many more oh, other imagine. researchers could be exposed to that. 
replicating those replicating those uh, studies and doing more further to advance breakthroughs that could be amazing, amazing uh, setbacks for cancer, really conquering that disease. But they don't do their job, and so now we're going to take their jobs. We'll take a break with Tucker Goodrich and be back live on A Neighbor's Choice. Choice Radio. I'm David Gronoski, your host. You can email me hello at a neighbor's choice.com. That's hello at a neighbor's choice.com for questions, guest suggestions, recommendations, feedback to the program. We're here with Tucker Goodrich, who has uh, got his own podcast called Debugging Life. So, Tucker, you also are a part working with Zero Acres Farms, and they've just developed their, their announcement of this new product available, right? Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so they're, um, you know, kind of to follow up with what we were just, just discussing, they've um, released their new product, which is a better a replacement for vegetable oils. It's got a, it's much more stable, so it doesn't break down into toxins like regular vegetable oils do when you use them for cooking. And I mean, there are, they are cooking oils. Um, in fact, it's as good as butter or beef tallow um, and better than every vegetable oil out there. So it's a really exciting product. And what's also really exciting about this is that they've made a core part of their business model telling people about the health problems with existing vegetable oils and they're putting a lot of money into it and they've got some pretty big backers the um robert downey jr is an investor and he's going to be help spreading the word um the oh i've forgotten his name the founder of virgin air um the british the very rich british fellow um whose name has completely escaped me, is also Richard Branson, Richard Branson is, yeah. uh, is one of the lead investors. Um, so this, you know, through the good work of Jeff Nobbs and the folks at Zero Acre Farms, we are going to kind of force this message out into the mainstream media and even better, have a product that people can get that is going to be a much healthier way to cook your food than using the existing uh, vegetable oils that have been dominating the cooking oil market for almost a hundred years now. Um, You know, as everybody in the United States got fat and sick and diabetic. So it's, it's a really exciting day that, you know, and it's one of those things that gives, gives one hope. There are folks out there who are looking to do the right thing and are willing to put their money, uh, their money behind doing the right thing. And you know, a listener really asked, "Do you have a link for this, this new is product? That, is it available? What's the link?" Uh, it's uh, zeroacre dot com is the link to their website, and you can order the cultured oil, which is what the product is is known as. Uh, there, I think they've got a little bit of a lead time for delivering orders right now, but you can order it today. Um, I've got a box here with my bottle in it and i haven't had a chance to try it yet because i've been pretty busy today but i'm really looking forward to making a salad with this stuff yeah they sent me a product Uh, and i'm going to try it out as well so i look forward to see how it how it goes so it's always exciting to see people come up with uh startups to try to solve these problems solve pollution solve uh different uh 
the factors, health factors that are that are involved with these products. So I'm really uh, excited Absolutely. to see what happens with you guys. I want to also ask you, Tucker, while we're here, uh, to, to see what you've been doing in the research of type 2 diabetes, something that has been affecting so many people in our on our population. Uh, what's the latest research you've been doing on this disease and its effects with, uh, you know, the, the seed oils affecting how people express this disease, you know? Well, I mean, this is, you know, I, folks have to remember type Type 2 diabetes is a new disease. It used to be very rare. It was what was known as adult onset diabetes. And it was called adult onset because children didn't get it, right? If a child got diabetes, it's they would get what's known as uh, type 1 diabetes, uh, which is where the pancreas fails to make any more insulin. And then more and more kids started getting diabetes, type 2 diabetes, so they had to change the name. And, you know, back in the 1960s, they figured out, hey, if you want to mimic type 2 diabetes, um, you just inject somebody with soybean oil, right? So we have yeah. this, on the one hand, our consumption of soybean oil is skyrocketing. We know that if you inject somebody with soybean oil, that you can give them type 2 diabetes. And we see that we have this epidemic of type 2 diabetes happening in America and now all around the world, and nobody connects the dots, right? Um, so when you, to, when you eat vegetable oils, it makes your body more susceptible to oxidative damage. And when that happens, it, you basically what's happening is you're having an autoimmune reaction and part of the autoimmune reaction is you start producing um, more insulin and you start producing more glucose and your body is doing this because those are both tools that your body uses to fight off an infection more effectively except in type 2 diabetes you don't have an infection the seed oils when they oxidize in your body fool your body into thinking that it is undergoing an infection so it starts trying to fight it, right? And they've shown in humans, three different studies have shown in humans that cutting seed oils will reduce insulin resistance and hypoglycemia in fairly short order. The latest study showing this came out of Yale University. So, you know, it's one of the more cut and dried cases of you know, cause and effect that I've come across. And yet, if you, you know, look at our dietary guidelines, they still tell you that you should be eating vegetable oils. It's a bit of a mystery. Um, well, actually, it's not a mystery. I just, I recently interviewed a scientist, Tom Brenna, who is pretty clear about how the dietary guidelines ignore most of the evidence out there. And a lot of the evidence for, uh, you know the harms of seed oils they're just ignoring why do you think that is there's a lot of bias i mean look the the guy who's the chairman of the latest dietary guidelines committee uh uh a professor named sabate is a medical missionary for the seventh day adventist church and he's trying to convince everybody in the world that they could go on a vegetarian diet, right? Why that fellow is on the Dietary Guidelines Committee in a country where we have a freedom, where we're supposed to be free from the establishment of religion, is basically using a government organization to push a vegetarian, a religiously motivated vegetarian diet on us is a bit of an outrage. Um, so there's just, unfortunately, a lot of the folks in the nutrition science and dietitian communities are pushing a religious message uh, about the benefits of a vegetarian diet. And it doesn't have support in the scientific literature, but they just ignore the evidence that doesn't, um, that doesn't support their position. Yeah, it's one of those things that you just continue to see a lot of misinformation talked about like it's settled science. It's ridiculous. 
Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. And anything that contradicts their position, they just ignore or they, you know, go to ridiculous lengths to try and discredit it. And, you know, you see this even coming out of Harvard University. I mean, we I think we talked about this in the past. Harvard and uh, Darius Mozaferian published this study about the most fattening foods in America. And the most fattening food in America was French fried potatoes, which are, of course, fried in seed oils. Regular potatoes aren't fattening. So their study showed that seed oils are the most fattening food in America. And they just lied about what their study showed and tried to hide very clear evidence that seed oils are the most fattening food in the United States. And shockingly, (laughs) probably shockingly to nobody, they were funded by one of the biggest uh, producers of foods containing seed oils, Unilever. Um, When you see, what about monounsaturated fat? I know this Zero Acres product has a lot of monounsaturated fat, but people like Brad Marshall and Ray Pete would say monounsaturated fat can be kind of fattening too, right? Well, monounsaturated fats don't break, they don't oxidize the way that polyunsaturated fats do, and they don't, um, you know, they are susceptible to oxidation, but very, very, very much less so. And when they do oxidize, they don't break, they don't oxidize into the same toxins that the polyunsaturated fats, and especially the polyunsaturated fats and seed oils do. So they're stable for cooking at high temperature. They are stable when they're um, used in processed foods. In fact, a number of years ago, uh, the Mars company switched their peanut M&Ms, one of my favorite treats, from regular peanuts to these low linoleic acid peanuts, low omega-6 peanuts. And the benefit that they cited was that it increased their shelf life by tenfold, right? But the benefit to you and me is that they're not gonna break down into these toxins in our body in the same way that a regular peanut or a peanut oil would. Yeah, okay, that's interesting. So we need to do more discussions. We did one with Brad Marshall that'll be coming out soon. You'll wanna check out neighborschoice.com. subscribe to our email update to get that if you uh, want to see that in your email inbox you'll also want to subscribe to our rumble and bit shoot and our podcast feed if you want the audio only so uh, that's going to be exciting you're going to like that interview we're going to have some more crossovers i think we have more exciting crossovers in nutrition than anybody else in media wouldn't you say tucker i think you're doing a fantastic job david and thank you so much for doing it And also, I want to give you a plug, too, for your podcast. Tell me something else that's coming out soon with your podcast, a new interview or something that people would like to hear. Well, uh, Tom Brenna is going to be coming out in a couple of weeks, and I got a new doctor. Uh, I've got a doctor who actually uses seed oils in his practice here in Boise, Idaho. And he reached out to me a little while ago, and I finally went to see him, and then did an interview with him talking about some of the amazing results he's seen in his practice um, by changing people's diets. So it's, it's got some pretty remarkable stories. Guys coming in with bagfuls of medicine and dropping them on his desk and saying, Doc, thanks to you, I don't need these anymore. Well, very good. Thanks again, Tucker, for joining us. David, it was great. Thank you. I'm David Gronowski. Godspeed.